So when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he said, this is how you should pray. Pray our Father in heaven, which is the intimate, loving relationship we have with God. Hallowed be your name, which is us acknowledging and humbling our souls before the great and holy and perfect God of all creation. And then he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven as we submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So this part of the prayer is acknowledging that God is in charge of the world and acknowledging that Jesus is in charge of me and and you and each other. So it's a pretty good question, though. Who's in charge of you? We all like to think we're in charge, don't we? We all like to be the boss and the one that takes over. We, he, we say things like, well, it's my life, I'll do whatever I want, thank you very much. Uh, but, interestingly, the, the, um, the question really only has two answers. Either sin is in charge of our lives or Jesus is. They're the only two choices. Uh, sin or Jesus, it's up to you. And as we pray this prayer, your kingdom come, we're inviting God to be in charge of our life. So let's unpack that a little bit. Uh, When Jesus said to pray, your kingdom come, what did he actually mean by that? Well, it's interesting that the word kingdom really refers to a reign, some sort of kingly reign over an area. Uh, There's been many great dynasties of rulers in our society over over thousands of years as the Kublai Khan was a, a, a great ruler the Roman Empire spread uh, all across Europe uh, led by the Caesars uh, Net- Napoleon led the French expansion the the Qing dynasty in China the Russian Revolution the British Empire all of them had great areas of reign and rule and the kingdom of God, is really, in one sense, is God's reign over everything. That God is the creator of the universe. Jesus is the king of kings. Uh, Every ruler, every knee shall bow before him because his kingdom is a kingdom over all kings and over all people. So when we pray, your kingdom come, we are, in one sense, praising Jesus as the mighty king of kings, the one who's above all, and, the, and we're acknowledging his ownership over us and over this earth. And we're acknowledging that every human being, even the greatest of rulers, uh, will bow before him as their king too. It's interesting that uh, Jesus said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we know that in heaven... God has complete and unresisted reign. He rules over all that's been made and everything that's been created and there is no sin in the heavenlies. There is no error. Uh, There is none who can stand against him. But on earth, we have something a little bit different happening. That earth has a lot of catching up to do. So Jesus said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So... Earth got lots of catching up to do. Your life and my life, we've got lots of catching up to do. You see, God created you and I with a free will. And and he also allowed uh, limited influence from Satan in the behavior of, of human beings. In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 14, it says that Satan is the, the little God, if you like, the God of this age. In Psalm 115 verse 3, it says, Heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has been given to men. So this earth, because of the sin that has corrupted it, has uh, been corrupted because of sin. Uh, and people, people follow the prince of the air and the spirit uh, that is at work in the sins of the disobedient, so the scriptures say. Even Jesus said uh, when he was in the desert, um, he, he, he was tempted by Satan and Satan said to him, here, I'll give you my kingdom. And in the, in the sense, Satan w- was describing his sense of influence in humanity on earth. 
And Jesus even said, when he was asked about his kingdom, Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. Uh, in John chapter 18 and verse 36, he said this. In fact, earth, if you like, is a, is a, a battlefield and it is a fight for the souls of human beings. There's a spiritual battle going on in the lives of every human being on earth and Jesus is sending you and I to be part of fighting that war on people's behalf. There's a war to be won and, and it's in the earthly realm of existence. You know, the other day Eric and I watched a, uh, a war movie and it was about the resistance movement in the Netherlands during World War II. And it was all about the struggles and the tragedies uh, as they tried to fight off the Nazis who had taken over their country. And interestingly, when you're watching a movie like that, uh, the characters in the movie have no idea what's going to happen next, uh, but we do, don't we? We know that the Allies win the war. We knew that all of their suffering and their struggle would be worth it because, in the end, they win. And in one sense, Jesus has already won the victory of this battle that's going on around us, and he's won it through the cross. He's won it through his love and sacrifice in giving his life for the sins of the world and rising from the dead as a triumph over uh, uh, sin and death. He has won eternal life for everyone who believes. And the rest of history is kind of like mopping up uh, a mopping up campaign in preparation for the triumphal entry of Jesus, our King. So that's, that's in one sense, the kingdom uh, and the, the expansion of God's kingdom that's happening on earth as we seek to uh, encourage everyone to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus said at one point, or sorry, it was John the Baptist who said, the kingdom of God is at hand. In other words, the kingdom of God has arrived. It's here. And the kingdom of God that John the Baptist was rise, uh, uh, referring to was the fact that the king had arrived. Jesus, the king of kings, the son of God, the one who was promised in the Old Testament the Messiah King, the Saviour had arrived and literally everything had changed overnight. The kingdom of God was at hand. Uh, and so Jesus is literally spreading his reign and rule into people's hearts and transforming them. He is making us new creations. We're born again. And it, it's been exciting in the last few weeks that one of our young people uh, professed the Lord uh, uh, Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. And that's what happens when people meet the king. Uh, and that's the kingdom of God here, right now, changing people's lives. So when we pray, your kingdom come, we are asking the, uh, the power, rule and the salvation of Jesus to come into our lives and into the lives of the people around us. Uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So in one sense, the kingdom is here, and in another sense, the kingdom is growing. Uh, you remember Jesus referred to the kingdom being like a mustard seed, the tiniest little seed that grows into one of the biggest bushes or trees. Uh, and so there's a, a growing kingdom in this world. Jesus has given you and I the authority to take the gospel and his love to the world. In Matthew 28, 18, we have what's called the Great Commission, uh, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. So we've been given a mandate to grow God's kingdom, to expand God's kingdom. So your kingdom come. So when we pray your kingdom come, we're praying that the reach of the gospel of grace in Jesus Christ spread as far as possible to as many people as possible. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In another sense, the kingdom that we pray to come hasn't quite yet arrived. The ultimate victory of God's kingdom is wrapped up in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, that the ultimate display, the ultimate uh, um, confirmation of the victory of God 
is in the coming of Jesus. Paul describes it like this in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will rise imperishable and we will be changed. Then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. So one day soon, the Lord Jesus is going to come again and culminate that victory over sin and death. It's interesting, one of the last words of the, the Bible in Revelation, chap, last chapter of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, it says this, He who testifies to these things, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. That's a beautiful prayer, isn't it? Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. And that's kind of what we're praying. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come, Lord Jesus. I think in every Christian's heart, there's a, a longing for when Jesus comes again. A longing to, 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 to be home with him. A longing to be with the Lord a longing to be free from the influence and environment of the sinful fallen world that we see, a longing to see the final victory of Jesus over all things. And so if you look at this prayer, your kingdom come is a plea asking Jesus to come, to come into our hearts, to come into our families, to come into our church, to come into our city, to come into our world and to bring that victory into the the hearts and lives of people. Come, Lord Jesus, your kingdom come. And this is achieved through the victory that Jesus has already uh, secured through the cross and the forgiveness of sin. The second part of the prayer, uh, this line of prayer, is your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The natural implication is if Jesus has a kingdom and his reign and he is to be our king uh, and we're invited into his kingdom and commissioned to carry out his expansion, then we would naturally desire the will of God in our lives and in our world. Your will be done is, is a prayer of a person who knows Jesus. We want Jesus' will to be done in our lives. Uh, we want Jesus to be the boss to be the kingpin, <laughs> to be the Lord, the sovereign God of our lives. And when we pray, your will be done, we're committing to follow in obedience, absolute obedience to Jesus Christ. Uh, not thanks for the suggestions, the 10 suggestions, Lord, <laughs> but absolute obedience in the way that we live our life. Absolute submission to the King of Kings, have you ever been past a shop and it says, under new management? Well, that's what it means to be a Christian. We're under new management. We're no longer being managed and controlled by sin and death. We are now being uh, managed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Your will be done uh, on earth as it is in heaven. In our families, we invite Jesus to influence every relationship as a parent or a child or a friend we invite Jesus to, to be, uh, his will be done in the way that we live our life. In our community, in our workplace or our sport or our play, we're in, uh, in our media and our TV and our music, we're saying, Lord Jesus, your will be done in my life and in the life of the people around me. So God is not our spiritual advisor, someone we consult on occasions, uh, when we get in a bit of trouble, or he's not our emergency services contact number uh, that we simply contact when we get in real big trouble. He's our Lord. He is our King. And when we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done, we are inviting Jesus to be Lord and Saviour in our lives. L Lord, your will be done. I don't know about you, but some, sometimes... Saying the words, Lord, your will be done, can be hard. 
Because sometimes something inside of us, we sometimes think, well, maybe the Lord's will won't be, won't be as much fun or maybe the Lord's will, uh, I don't get to do the, the, the thing that I really wanted to do or maybe it'll make me do, the Lord's will be, be something really difficult. Uh, but I can tell you from experience, and I know that you know from experience, that whenever you follow the Lord's will, it's always the right. It's always best. It is always brings the most joy and peace and hope in this world. Uh, and so when we play, pray, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we're inviting Jesus to direct and manage our life and, uh, and to put up a new sign We've got a, the, the learner's permit sign. There's a new sign going up and it says under new management that we are now under the influence uh, and the, of our loving Father in heaven, the holy God of all creation, whose kingdom has come in our life and in our world around us. Maybe there's somebody out uh, listening today. Maybe you've never, ever really said, Lord, your will be done. Maybe you've never said, Jesus, I want you to be the boss. I want you to be, I, I want to be under new management. I want you to be my Lord and Saviour. And I want you to know today that Jesus has forgiven your sin. Jesus has taken your sin on the cross and he's re uh, removed it forever through faith in Jesus Christ. And he rose from the dead to give you new life and you are a new creation. And maybe you've never ever got to the point where you've said, Lord, I want you to be my boss. I want you to be my saviour. I want you to, I want to be under new management. I want you as Lord and saviour. Maybe, maybe today's that day where you go, Lord Jesus, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we're sorry for not acknowledging that you are the king, that a lot of the times we live our life as if we are. And today, Lord, we open up our hearts and minds and soul and say, Lord Jesus, come as our king. We're under new management. You're our Lord and saviour, and we invite you to take uh, that rightful place and position in our lives. We ask you to take that rightful place and position in our relationships, in our workplace, uh, in, in our community. And Lord, we, we offer ourselves as living sacrifices to you for your kingdom and your purpose in all things. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching our online service from Northbourne Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Graham Prentice and we'd love to connect with you further. You can do that in several ways. You can press the subscribe button on your screen. You can have a look on our website at northbournebaptist.com. You can have a look at our Facebook page, our church app, or you could jo join us live on Sunday mornings. And if you need anything, any help with anything, please ring the church office, 98598101, or send an email to office at northbournebaptist.church. Blessings for the week ahead.